Maar daar wil je het ook niet om. En daar is het een fans. Doe het ook. Geef mijn greetings to Janet en Nadim. En ik kan je op de screen zien. Het is echt een groot honor. Even we, uh, we are so far away from each other. But I'm very happy to, to attend this um, uh, great session. Um, um, I want to talk a little bit about fertility sparing surgery in uh, patients with cervical cancer. And I think there's all the great uh, controversy and movement in, in the, maybe in the future. But I also want to raise some of my behaviors about this uh, problem. Uh, sorry, that's not okay. Uh, as you know, These are most uh, young patients, often highly educated. They are socially economic established and they have uh, found their partners for fam uh, family formation. Then they get a the cancer diagnosis, which is for them, of course, a life changing and uh, potentially life threatening event. And this is an uh, often these are long discussions with the patients and the couple. And uh, the most uh, argument for and the main argument for them is none of these patients would accept any oncologic compromise or uncertainty in their treatment. We do have several um, options for fertility preserving surgery. This is a simple cone, a simple hysterectomy and a radical trachelectomy. But what are the facts and the data uh, about all these um, different issues? It was the huge merit of this French colleague, uh, Daniel Dajon, who in reintroduced the technique of radical trachelectomy in, at the end of the last um, the century. And very soon, it, I think it was established that there are two preconditions for this surgery. At first, small tumors less than two centimeters of maximum diameter. And the second one are two more free lymph nodes. And I'm coming back very shortly to this uh, topic again. Uh, it is the aim to get the tumor in three margins of at least five millimeters, but the five millimeters are the rather arbitrary um, um, uh, uh, limit, and it's not so underlined by good data. Well, we have to, in the literature, there are different approaches described for the trachelectomy. Uh, the most often done technique was the radical vaginal trachelectomy, according to the original description by Daniel Dajon. Less uh, surgeries have been done by abdominal trachelectomy, um, uh, uh, even less by robotic trachelectomy and total laparoscopic radical trachelectomy. After the um, publication of the LAC trial, we have to, of course, to be cautious with, with any uh, technique that uses a manipulator, uh, for example, for the robotic radical trachelectomy or the total laparoscopic trachelectomy, the technique is described using the manipulators, but I would be very cautious at the moment to, to uh, continue using any kind of manipulator, and we haven't done this uh, since the beginning of this technique. The French colleague gave, in my opinion, the, the best view, but it's not updated in the one or in the last one or two years. But looking at the data, we, we can see that most data exists for radical vaginal trachelectomy, uh, that followed by abdominal trachelectomy, and the others are uh, less frequent. What we can also see is that the pregnancy rate of the abdominal trachelectomy uh, is the lowest uh, among these uh, procedures, and, uh, but abdominal trachelectomy and total laparoscopic have the highest rate of premature deliveries. The simple uh, trachelectomy and cone uh, seems to be the best outcome for, uh, for pre with respect to premature delivery rate, but I come back to this issue also again. Again. Our experience is, is mostly based on radical vaginal trachelectomy, and I think it's today a very standardized technique. Even it is not a simple technique, but it is very standardized, uh, comprising two parts, a laparoscopic part and vaginal part, and again, going back for control laparoscopy for hemostasis. In the screens, you can see in the left, left upper screen the part we want to resect, marked with uh, um, 
black dotted uh, line and the green uh, part is the part we want to preserve from the cervix. Again, in my opinion, uh, it is a very good tool that you have your finger and we, uh, to uh, estimate and calculate it also according to the previous um, preoperative imaging and the histological side of a cone or biopsy where you must uh, uh, um, put set your uh, resection line how high you must or you can go in order to preserve uh, an adequate length of, of cervix but or, uh, do not compromise the oncologic result. We always place a permanent cyclage, as you can see in the left lower uh, um, picture, and this is the final situs. Uh, the question is, uh, this is a, a relatively long video describing this technique in detail. This is from the um, young patient where we have, you can see, performed sentinel uh, lymph node dissection. She's part of the Centrix uh, tribe. And we always uh, use the time, for, waiting time for the result of first section to open the vesicle vagina and rectal the vaginal part. Again, this video uh, is submitted to you, and for those who are interested, it will be published in the International um, uh, Journal of Gynecal Cancer very soon. So it, it's available as a commercial, uh, as an, an, a public uh, video uh, for those who are interested in this technique. This is filmed with an, uh, a video colposcope with uh, all the magnifications, but. Uh, Bori, I want to skip it to keep in time for those uh, a copy exists uh, uh, at the organizing committee and for the others who are interested, I can also send it by a Dropbox. This is only the marginal part of the procedure in detail, again, filmed with an, um, a video corposcope to, to demonstrate the technique step by step. In several cases, uh, uh, it, it, it might be very difficult, and this is one of the behaviors and uh, one of the reasons I think that this uh, technique became not more widespread among gynecologic oncologists, because the original dissection via a marginal route can sometimes be very challenging and difficult. And that's why uh, our, one of our colleagues and, um, together with us developed a technique. You can see where we dissect the medial part of the bladder pillar already uh, laparoscopically during the waiting time for the frozen section. And as you can see in this very short clip, we have put some loops on the small part of the ureters um, be between the undercrossing of the ureter and the entrance to the bladder. And if you go back now to the virginal part or to, to the virginal part, you can cross this loop very easily and find the ureters much easier. This can be helpful in a very narrow vagina, in a nulliparous woman, or if you have additional circumstances like deep endometriosis. It was just accepted in the International uh, Journal of Gynecologic Cancer and will be published. This is a typical cycle photogram two weeks after the sur surgery and uh, in the other one six months after the surgery. Uh, there are, I think, I think a, a couple of unanswered questions for the best management during pregnancy, but uh, there we need better data also for the uh, obstetrician management and uh, obstetrician handling. And I think that there are a couple of questions that we should um, uh, solve in some trials in the future. Of course, there are some possible complications of the trochelectomy described in some papers. Interestingly, I found that uh, the most interesting thing for me was that 20% of these patients who did uh, undergo this kind of surgery to get pregnant in the future, didn't have any sexual intercourse 12 months postoperatively. This was difficult to understand. One of the known uh, problems is the uh, problem with isthmic stenosis. And that's why, we, as you saw in the video, we always place a temporary catheter uh, before we place a permanent surclash in order to avoid it. What about the tailoring of the, of the um, surgery? There are some attempts. 
to perform a less radical uh, fertility sparing surgery. That means either a cone or repeated cone or simple trialectomy. And of course, to tail we can tailor the radicality of the lymph node dissection by doing only a sentinel lymph node dissection. You, this is an, a totally other topic, only two uh, short remarks. Uh, we saw excellent pictures by Nadim. Uh, Perfect uh, um, presentation. Congratulations, Nadim. Uh, there are two ongoing trials on the Sentinel concept in early survival cancer, the Sentix study and Sentinel 3. We are actively parting in the Sentix uh, trial. And uh, one is a very um, uncommon or more and more frequently seen problem can be that young patients have more and more um, uh, tattoos, sometimes very extensive. And you can see nearly all tattoo uh, inks in the in the lymph nodes of the pelvis. And the question is, do this uh, uh, ink, uh, tattoo ink blocks the uh, normal uh, lymphatic channels and pathways and allows us to, to detect really the central nodes of the cancer? It could be a problem. We don't have a real answer. Uh, I got the permission from David because we are really actively uh, participating in the study. One of the um, uh, papers is already um, published from the Satix trial, and you can see that uh, comparing the um, home pathology result with the central pathology review, there were differences with major or critical differences in nearly 30% of the uh, sentinel nodes. This was for me a really surprising and very difficult uh, uh, number. Uh, and the second one, which is under review, that the frozen section is not a reliable tool for the interval staging with a failure rate of more than 50%. But coming back to the precondition for performing the per fertility preservation are two more free lymph nodes, and we always send the lymph nodes to frozen section. Again, this is under review and probably will be published soon. Let's uh, see how the final results of the Sandex trial uh, um, are end up. I'm a little bit uh, um, frustrated about the results. That's why the key is, as Nadim already pointed out, the pathologist has such an important role in the sentinel uh, um, procedure. It's not only the surgery, it's, all, it's also the pathologist. We have therefore analyzed the data of our more than 100 patients in the Sentix trial, and we only had three false negative where they did not detect micrometastasis or even um, uh, isolated tumor cells. And I think this is an acceptable rate, but not 55%. Coming back to Taylor, the uh, radicality with respect to the cervix. The one uh, suggestion is only to pro perform a conization. The oncologic results and the um, the inclusion criteria differ from the studies. And you see, we have less than 200 patients where we uh, uh, worldwide where we have uh, data with a large range of uh, um, oncologic re uh, results between zero, no recurrence, and in one of the larger uh, studies from the Italian group for, with 13% recurrences. And I think this is a four time more or three times more more recurrence rate than by trophallectomy, and this is not acceptable. So we need better trials uh, or an, even in an, a randomized trial, which might be very difficult to answer this question. And the argument, coming back to the argument that the conversation does not impair obstetric outcome, is also not definitely true. We know this from the huge data uh, and meta-analysis from uh, conversation for uh, uh, cervical intraepithelial neoplasia, that um, cone versus no cone has a definitely higher rate for premature delivery and low-term birth rate, and that repeated cone has a significant uh, worse, a higher rate of preterm delivery, and also the death of the cone plays an important role for, for, for this. You cannot say that the cone is without any obstetrical risk. 
Just now, uh, the Mori plant published in a paper, simple vaginal trachelectomy, the new standard of care. I was a little bit su surprised about the title of the manuscript because they included, this is a retrospective single institutional study only comprising 42 patients and with very restricted um, uh, inclusion criteria. And they also had one death in recurrence ended in a death for the patient in the small cohort and then to say this is a new standard of care is to, for me to low to to low to to um, uh, evidence to give this as a statement in the paper in some of the reviews there are always the argument we will get in the, in the very soon data from the three studies that conserves the shape and the GOG I think the GOG and shape and perform uh, any kind of hysterectomy, so it differs from any uh, surgery which preserves part of the cervix. And the conserved trial, even with very restricted inclusion criteria, did have four to four or five, it's not published yet, recurrent. This is, and this is uh, again in this highly selected group, uh, also in, for me, unexpected percentage. So I would also be a little bit cautious with the interpretation. So, in my opinion, at the moment, the cone and the simple trochlectomy are not on as uh, oncologically as safe as radical trochlectomy. We have different indications, small cohorts for this less radical surgery, short follow-up, and the recurrence rate is not really defined yet. In conclusion, I think radical trochlectomy, we have the most experience with vaginal trochlectomy combined with laparoscopic lymphadenectomy. It has a clear indication. It's a standardized technique with low complication rate and low recurrence rate and a good chance to get pregnant. Of course, we, we have to look for better uh, in the indication criteria that we can tailor the radicality of the parametrectomy and the lymph node dissection. And that's why, I, as, as Nadim pointed out, fertility sperm surgery should only be done in centers that offer all techniques in order to exclude the bias because they cannot offer everything. Sometimes I think this is a nice picture from our friends from, from Brazil, unfortunately, also with a corona problem at the moment uh, from the Amazon. Sometimes I think there, it's like two opinions in this field. And this is where the, in the Amazon, where the Rio Amazonas and the Rio Negro comes together, both, both is water, but it does not mix over a period of five kilometers uh, because of several um, chemical reasons and sometimes the discussion in gynecology is very similar. Thank you very much for your attention and I'm very proud and happy to be, uh, uh, to be involved in this wonderful meeting. Thank you so much.